Hello, and today I want to talk to you about climate and weather. Now, in this discussion, I want to first address some of the causes of climate. So, the distinction between weather and climate is very subtle. Weather focuses on the condition of the atmosphere at a particular place in time, usually for a short period or term. Climate, on the other hand, refers to the average conditions of temperature, precipitation, winds, and clouds in an area. And this is for a long term or a long period of time. What causes climate? Well, there are two things. Air temperature, which direct whether it is cold or warm climate, and there's precipitation, which determines whether the climate is dry or humid Now, there are a few factors that affect temperature. They include latitude, altitude, distance from large bodies of water, and ocean currents. Latitude refers to the distance from the equator measured in degrees. If you ever look at a globe of Earth, you notice the equator represents a horizontal line around the Earth. The latitude lines follow the same rule. Now, in breaking down these latitude regions, you have various temperature zones. They include tropical zones, temperature, temperate zones, sorry, excuse me, and polar zones. Tropical zones refer to warmer climates. Temperate zones have ranging temperatures and polar zones have cold climates. Now, if you look at a globe of Earth, you can see how these various zones play a role in how temperature occurs in the world. Looking at the equator located in the central portion of the Earth, it represents a latitude of zero. That is the halfway point of the Earth. As you go north and south, you notice that there are two lines indicating Tropic of Cancer at 23 degrees north. And as you go south, you notice the Tropic of Capricorn, indicated by 23 degrees south, or 230 as the type typo highlights. Now, the region located between the Tropic of Capricorn and the Tropic of Cancer usually constitutes a tropical zone or tropical climate where it is warmer. Going further out, you go from the Tropic of Cancer north up to the Arctic Circle, which is located at 67 degrees north latitude you notice the temperate, temperate zone. These have ranging temperatures. And if you notice, the United States falls right within the region between the Tropic of Cancer line at 23 degrees north and the Arctic Circle at 67 degrees north. Moving south, the region between the Tropic of Capricorn going south to the the Antarctic Circle of 67 degrees south, that region is also known as a temperate zone. And lastly, at the in reach poles of the globe, you notice the Arctic zone, which goes from 67 degrees north at the Arctic Circle up north, and from 67 degrees south down to indicate indicate the Arctic zone down there. In these cases, as one would expect, these regions have colder climates. Now, altitude is something that you should be familiar with, but if not, hopefully I can shed light on. When I think of altitude, I tend to think of mountains. And altitude refers to the elevation of sea level. 
Now, most landforms that have high altitude generally have cooler climates. So when I think of a highland area, such as a mountain, I tend to think of snow caps or ice on top of a mountain. Therefore, higher altitudes equal cooler temperatures and lower altitudes equal much warmer temperatures. The distance from large bodies of water can directly affect the climate nearby. In the case with marine-based climates, they usually have warmer winters and cooler summers. Moving further inland, inland, you find continental climates, and they are usually colder winters and have warmer summers. Ocean currents include a topic that we have discussed previously, but you need to understand that they have a direct impact on temperature and climate. Ocean currents represent streams of water within the ocean that move in regular patterns. There are three notable examples of such currents. They include the Gulf Stream, which is located on the eastern coast, the North Atlantic Drift, and the California Current, which is located on the west coast. There is also an additional one that we may have learned called the EAC, or the East Australian Current. An example of these currents can be shown in the image in front of you. In this case, the currents take on a circular pattern. Much like the description of Coriolis effect, you notice that the currents alternate between warm currents going one way and cold currents going another. In most cases, the warm current currents tend to travel away from the equator towards the colder regions of the globe. Conversely, the colder climate regions tend to carry current towards the warmer regions to form kind of a cycle. Factors that affect precipitation include prevailing winds and mountain ranges. Prevailing winds represent movement of air masses caused by directional winds in a region. The amount of water vapor in an air mass influences how much rain or snow will fall. The amount of water vapor in the prevailing wind depends on where the wind comes from. In the following image, you can see how wind travels up mountain ranges. During this process, air forced up the mountain tends to cool on one side, condenses, and creates clouds. Eventually, this forms into clouds that are ready to release rain in the form of precipitation. This rain falls as precipitation on the windward side of a mountain. On the opposite side, which we will call the leeward side, it tends to have dry, arid conditions, as indicated in the image to the right. Notice in the mountain ranges, you have a windward side that is wet, and you have a leeward side, which is characterized as being drier. Finally, we have microclimates. Microclimates represent small regions with specific climate conditions. Examples of such microclimates include parks, cities, areas near lakes or ponds, and gardens, and many other things. And that completes our lessons on what causes climate.